second semifinal of the Little League Softball World Series. Will it be Italy or Louisiana moving on to the championship game? We've already seen one semifinal, and it was jam-packed with action. An eight-inning game where North Carolina came out on top of Oregon, three to two. They are in that championship game tomorrow here at Alpen Rose. Welcome back to Portland. Courtney Lyle alongside two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith and two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough. Yesterday in the quarterfinals, we ended with a bang, a huge upset. Italy defeating previously undefeated Hawaii. Italy was 1-3 coming into that game, and Hawaii had a 4-0 record. But what Italy did was they came into the game, and they played fearlessly from pitch number one. They were executing. They were taking advantage of Hawaii's mistakes, and they were taking extra 60 feet to be able to put pressure on Hawaii all game long. They came away with that 4-1 to one victory to put themselves into the semis. They played fearlessly again all game long. They told us they played together and they played to have fun and that got them to today. Well, they're going to face a Louisiana team who is led by Haley Peterson who's done some pretty outstanding things this week. Like hit for the cycle in a softball game and not just a seven inning softball, but a little league game where it's only six innings. She's been outstanding in that leadoff spot. Two home runs on top of it in that cycle. So just outstanding. A 438 batting average. She can do it all. Six RBIs. Look for her to be a spitfire at the top of the order. Only one of these teams can move on. Who will it be? Semi-final at the Little League Softball World Series, Italy taking on Louisiana, and let's meet the kids from Milano. Sveva Mariatti, la mia atleta preferita è Yuri Biaricard. Cristina Fenici, il mio atleta preferito è Erika Piancastelli. Giulia Orini, il mio atleta preferito è Glover Taylor. Chiara Di Lauro e il mio atleta preferito è Monica Abbott. Carlotta Villa è my favorite athlete is Heavy Baez. Lucia Polini, il mio atleta preferito è Valentino Rossi. Cecilia Ravasio, la mia atleta preferita è Erika Piancastelli. Emma Silva, il mio atleta preferito è Taylor Glover. Erika De Bellis ed il mio atleta preferito è Giulia Longhi. Letto e il mio atleta preferito è Erika Piancastelli. Eleonora Cesena, il mio atleta preferito è Melanie Sheldon. Ludovica Garavello, il mio atleta preferito è Sierra Romero. Caterina Binetti, il mio atleta preferito è Marta Gasparotto. Alessandra Biffi, il mio atleta preferito è Erika Piancastelli. Dante Di Lauro, Lombardia, Little League, Italy. Tiziana Rombi, Sara Dall'Alpi. What a run for this team from Italy. They were so excited last night after that upset of Hawaii. And even talking to them today, you could still feel that excitement from this group. And they really did a great job of playing together and, and playing loose, which is their goal going into that game, and they completely executed it. So much energy. No need to bring it today as well. Yeah, they're going to face a Louisiana team led by Kayla Giardina in the circle. A really nice outing yesterday to help this Louisiana team get the win. Yeah, and Giardina is going to throw a lot of strikes. She has great command. She's only had four walks and 16 innings pitched here, and she's going to keep the ball low. She likes to work her curveball. She likes to work her drop ball, and she has great placement of her fastball. Winner of this game moves on to the Little League Championship game. North Carolina is already there. Who's going to join them? Second year in a row that this team from River Ridge, Louisiana, representing the Southwest has made it 
to Portland in the Little League Softball World Series. They were here last year. Did not get to make it to the championship game. This is where their run ended. And now a chance for redemption. And they were one of those undefeated teams this time last year that ended up losing in bracket play and didn't get a chance to play in the championship game. Carlotta Villa will be the first one to lead off a 417 hitter this week. First pitch strike from Kayla Giardina. On the top of this lineup for Italy is, if you look at their batting averages, they've been impressive. They've done a lot of damage, a 263 team batting average. Italy's shown that they can be fearless. You look at their matchup yesterday with Hawaii, they hadn't, Hawaii hadn't lost a game. They were averaging over eight runs per game. And Italy was like, okay, we're gonna come in here and play loose and play our best softball. Ava Burkett, even with a little hop, makes the out. It's a nice scoop by Ava Burkett there, going after this ball, gets it on the short hop because she doesn't get it in the air, but it's the throw where she shows off her gun. Whoa! It's like a gun. I think it's a bazooka. <laughs> like 70 miles an hour over to first base. Okay, yeah. Burkett. Next up is the catcher, Ludovica Garavello. The Italian crowd has been pretty loud. They've actually had a really nice turnout. Yeah. It's fun to see the flags being waved and cheering. Oh, beautiful in the wind. Well, that's what makes it a true World Series. We've got mm. some countries here from all over the world. Philippines, Italy, Canada. Mexico. Yeah. Garavello, first hit of the game for Italy. Third hit in the tournament for Ludovica. Ludo Garavella is just going to go the opposite way. She gets that bat barreled up on that ball, shoots it down the right field line. Good effort by Porsche, Reagan Porsche out in the right field. Knock that down, keep it in front of her. This is the pitcher, Chiara De La Rowe. She was pretty calm, cool, and collected yesterday against a hard-hitting Hawaii team in the circle. Helped out. Got an RBI, too, with her bat. A liner back to Giardina. They get the lead runner. Can't turn two. Uh, playing defense against this Italy team, you have to be ready. They put the ball in play, they run hard, they take extra bases, they go all out. Great hustle by De La Rowe to be able to get down and not get doubled off at first base. Katarina Benetti. Runner is going. They make the tag. Only the second time that Italy has caught speed, was caught stealing this week. Nelson with the throw down to Burkett. Great tag. They get out of the inning. Picking up the bats for Louisiana. Bottom of the first in this semifinal between Louisiana and Italy. Let's meet the team from River Ridge. Ava Palumbo and I'm Coach Ray's favorite. Love you, Coach Ray. Bailey Nelson, and you're watching ESPN. Na na na, na na na. Maddie Branch, and they call me Mad Dog. Roo, roo, roo. Claire Murphy, and they call me Clayberg. Katie Delat, they call me K Bird, my mom. T-Bird, my dad Big Bird, my sister Angry Bird, we're just a bird family. 
Reagan Porsche, and my hair is brighter than your future. Haley Peterson, I hit Yonkers. Olivia Bourgeois, I'm so good, One Direction wrote a song about me. Demari Harris, and I scoop balls on first base like Alvin Rose ice cream. Ava Burkett, and I taught Big Al how to hit dingers. Kayla Jardina, and I have a pet pig named Oreo who I really miss. <laughs> Let me do so, and I'm still searching for that pot of gold. Hey, Velasco, and I'm way better than my sister, Mikhail. Ray Wendell, manager of Team Southwest, representing East Bank Little League out of River Ridge, Louisiana. Sally Morrow, coach. Randy Delat, coach. We got some personalities wow. on that team from Louisiana. <laughs> Ava Burkett taught Al how to bit, hit dingers. Yeah. That's my favorite one. That's awesome. <laughs> well, their defense took care of business in the top of this inning. Now they're going to face Chiara De La Roe in the circle for Italy. De La Roe will throw a fastball. She'll throw a curveball. She was outstanding last night against Hawaii. 15 innings pitched, 17 strikeouts on the tournament. But you know what, ladies? Just two walks. And that's really what helped her last night against a strong hitting Hawaii team. But she locates her pitch so well. She throws with a lot of energy. She loves the sport. She told her dad that she wanted to be here when she was just five years old. And she's living her dream. How cool is that? All the way from Milano, Italy. A nice crowd in the stands for the second semifinal of the night. North Carolina is already in. We will see them tomorrow night in the championship here at Alpen Rose. And Haley Peterson gets to lead things off. She's a 438 hitter to lead Louisiana with seven hits. This is the second time these teams are meeting at the World Series. It was just two days ago, Sunday, when they played. Louisiana won that one 10 to nothing in four innings. Hey, you'll notice that Haley up at the plate, she has a really big load and a lot of movement. We asked her about that earlier. We got a chance to talk to them. She said at one day at practice, Coach Randy said, shine the light with the knob. So she thinks about the knob of the bat and moving her hands back towards her catcher to sh almost as if there was a light at the end of her knob shine the catcher with a light very unique she can she says that it gives her more power when she swings and it, hey, she's hit two home runs here two in one game so she's feeling it she's feeling it and she does have a little bit of pop in her bat and as long as you get on time there's that She's on time. <laughs> You're going to get it done. A single to start off for Haley Peterson. Pretty level swing here for Peterson. Look at that determination as she sees that one all the way to her back, keeps her front shoulder in on that hit, and is able to shoot it right back up the middle. And as Michelle said, she was right on time. That one had to have felt good. You First could, batter on board. Yeah, you could hear the way that just exploded off the bat. Bailey Nelson lays down the bunt. Villa comes and crashes in on it. They get her, but they do advance Peterson. Nelson getting the bunt down. One of the most important skills in the game is being able to sacrifice a teammate over 60 feet. Villa is going to come over, get it over to her teammate, Finici. They pick up the out. But Louisiana moves up into scoring position. Pitcher dual time, Kayla Giardina stepping in. She's due for a hit, went 0 for 2 against Mexico yesterday in their quarterfinal. It was a really close game, just a one to nothing win for Louisiana.
Watch Dela Row close her eyes, take a deep breath. We asked her about that routine. She said she started getting anxious, and so she wanted to take a pause before she delivered the pitch and clear her mind, and so she started closing her eyes and taking that deep breath. Routine's very important for pitchers, for hitters. You can see she closes her eyes, deep breath, takes her sign, gets on the pitching rubber, delivers the pitch. And she actually started that routine the first game here at the World Series. And she says that when she closes her eyes and she breathes in, she tells herself, come on, Kiata. And she felt that anxiety, too, because she just felt like the hitters here were so good that she was finding her heartbeat rise and she needed a way to calm herself down. And there's a strikeout for De La Rowe. Kiata likes to work the outside corner so she sets up that inside pitch. You can see it's going to come right in up at the knees. Kayla scooches back, but it's all about locating pitches, and Kiata's been able to do that. Eva Burkett called it foul. De La Rowe had six strikeouts yesterday in the quarterfinals against Hawaii. Pitched all six innings. Just barely fouled by what, a right. centimeter? Yep. This is Ava Burkett. She told you she taught Big Al how to hit dingers. The shortstop with Haley Peterson in scoring position, thanks to a leadoff single. Ray Windell is the manager of River Ridge, Louisiana. He's brought this team here a couple of years in a row now. They're going to challenge that, that the ball was ruled foul. That was the original call. Sixth year for Ray Windell as a volunteer. He started when his daughters were younger. Now they're older, but he's still coaching. We've seen so many of these close plays yeah. that the coaches have chosen to challenge, but all of them are so close that it's difficult to overturn it because there's not enough evidence to prove it the other way. Looks like it hits the line and then hits the glove. glove and then it, it, it's in foul territory. Remember, as a fielder, you just have to hit it while it's in foul and it's a foul ball. Call will stand, it's a foul ball. So Louisiana will lose one of its challenges. You get to keep your two challenges as long as you're successful. One ball, one strike to Ava Burkett. De La Rowe just tries to entice you to swing at those pitches a little bit off the plate. She keeps them right at the knees. She works both sides of the plate, however, mainly outside to right-handed hitters. High hit ball by Burkett. Fielded by Rovazio in right field. A runner left in scoring position for Louisiana.
Welcome back. No score here in the second. When Italy got back to their hotel yesterday, they were welcomed with a surprise party. Streamers, balloons, and cake provided by the North Carolina team. See, North Carolina knew that Italy didn't have a ton of friends and family here to celebrate their upset over Hawaii, so they had made a special surprise party for them, and they've become such good fans and friends that they're even some of the North Carolina team sitting with the Italian fans right now. We talked to the girls earlier they even learned how to say congratulations in Italian really one of the best stories we've heard here today is they've become really close friends I think that's my favorite story from this tournament so yeah. far how cool is that you know that Italy is so far from home and from Milano Italy and to have somebody back at the hotel to cheer them on after a huge upset is awesome and they got him pizza and cake and yeah. balloons and shrimp. I mean they went all out what I think if you talk to anyone who's been here all week long and watched the talent of all of these teams and the skills of all these teams, a lot of people thought that Hawaii was going to make it into that championship game and for Italy to beat them in the first quarterfinal game was uh, quite a victory for Milan Little League. Katerina Benetti was a big part of that. She is aggressive when she gets on and she just did. It keeps rolling to the wall. Two for Benetti. Benetti can run. She can hit. She is energy. She is fire. All wrapped up in one package. She drives that right back up the middle. Look at how compact her swing is. That power. The ball just explodes off. And then it gets all the way to the wall. Lead off double. Italy now with seven extra base hits in the tournament. Here comes Christina Finici with a runner in scoring position already. Giardina scoops it. That's big because Italy just grabbed that momentum. They would have had more momentum to it advance. Benetti up 60 feet over to, to third base, but Kayla Giardina gets a good read on that ball and just goes for it. Another athletic pitcher that we've seen here in Portland goes down to her knees and Italy unable to advance that runner 60 feet. I don't know, is that a sports center top 10? Da -da -da. That's da -da. pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. I think you gotta throw it in there somewhere. That's impressive. Finish the pitch, make the catch. Matilda de Colbaletu. Up and we've, one out. we've already seen Louisiana play such good defense. To me, this already, I know we've only played, what, four outs with them on defense, but they look like a different team than what we yeah. saw yesterday with their energy. We've seen some nerves, nerves from this team, a team that's been pushing at the plate, even in their regional. You got to see them in Waco in their regional round. Great time to play loose. Deco Baletu. Benetti in trouble. In a rundown situation. And the ball pops loose. She's going to be safe back at third. Forte. Eh? Forte. Okay. Tranquilla, tranquilla. Respira, respira, respira. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Tirati su un attimino. Okay. Yet another good defensive play, Michelle. Well, this is a base hit that's just taken away. Reagan Porsche getting that ball right into first base to Damari Harris. Big long turn by Bonetti. And a good rundown, good execution, but they push her all the way back to the bag. Just a learning point there. As soon as the runner turns your, her back from the, the, the defender with the ball, that's your cue to go ahead and throw the ball. Bailey Nelson waited a little bit too long to make that toss. Yeah, and fielders, you have to make sure you're at the bag so the fielder so with the ball has the opportunity to make the throw. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Katerina Benetti up and ready to run at third. Thank you. 
Well, that saved a run. I mean, would that look like it was a base hit down the line? It was going to score a run, be another base hit. It turns into an out and almost a, a second, or excuse me, a third out of the inning. Lucia Polini will try to bring Benetti home. Yeah, it seems to me like Louisiana has Italy pretty well scouted. Like, they've watched them all week, and they came in this game and have prepared their players for exactly what they were going to see out of Italy's offense. They're quick. They're not very powerful, but they're super aggressive. And you've got to be, you've got to know what you want to do with the ball defensively. And they just saw them on Sunday. Yeah. Ball and two strikes to Polini. A really interesting defensive shift, too, that we're seeing Louisiana take against these right-handed hitters for Louisiana. The center fielder, Olivia Bourgeois, is playing towards right center field, makes for a really big gap up the middle of the field and towards left center field, which is why Caterina Benetti on that hit up the middle got extra bases. Well, that defensive alignment, I think, works really well when you're throwing outside. You have to be very careful as a pitcher, knowing when you come back inside that there's a big open space out there in, in the outfield between left field and center. Bailey Nelson is keeping an eye on Benetti at third. She's gotten up and looked her way several times. You can't sleep on these Italy runners no. or Italian runners. Polini smacks it to Burkett at short. They say she got her. It was really close, though. I thought she might have been safe. A little bit of a bobble by Burkett. She gets it across to Damari Harris. I thought she was safe as well. I think that there's a good chance that Italy is going to go ahead and call for the replay. Whew. It's very it's close. It's very close. <laughs> oh, so my close. goodness. And Damari Harris does a good job of really stretching out. It's going to be a tough one for them, I think. Maybe the toughest one yet today. Yeah. That would be tough to overturn. It's real close. The original call was out. That's a big call because it scores a run. It happens at the exact same time. <laughs> so the question is, when is the catch made? Is it at the beginning of the glove? Is it in the back I, of the glove? I've always thought the back of the glove. Yeah. So that right there looks like she's... <laughs> <laughs> right there yeah. looks safe. Right there looks safe. Is her foot on the base? You know, but again, and then when is the foot on the base? Is it when it... But you're not 100% sure, too, that right. the ball's not in the back of her glove. It's that, that's why replay is so hard. <laughs> One thing we know for sure, this Italian team, you cannot make any bobbles out on defense. They're going to make you pay for it. Great hustle by Polini to even make that close. Let's see what Anthony, Anthony McGee says. She's safe. They reverse it. And that should score a run. They will rule it an error on the shortstop. Like you said, Amanda, you bobble it. Italy will take advantage. Got to, got to field it cleanly. You have to, there's so much pressure on this Louisiana defense because of what Italy presents offensively. Run scores on the error. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Italy tries to swipe a bag here. They were running like crazy against Hawaii last night.
Erica DeBellis. Italy is 11 for 12 on the bases, the most stolen bases by yeah. any of these four teams in the semifinal. And Katarina Benetti is such a spark plug for this team. She scored the first run and was a spark against Hawaii in the quarterfinal game late last night. Well, that leadoff double. I mean, you could just see she plays with so much energy and passion. We asked her about it today, and she said, when I'm out there on the bases, I am determined to go home because I know I've got to get a run on the board for this team. You can see it. Getting cleaned up and a little ice on the nose. Remember, had that collision at third base. Got caught in a rundown. Got out of it. First strikeout for Kayla Giardina. Benetti getting bandaged up. is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 50% or more on car insurance. Even the youngest fans like Colton having some fun at the Little League Softball World Series. They have packed the stands for both of these games. Both semifinals tonight. They got to see extra innings in the first one. It went to eight innings in North Carolina moved on. That just means more time for ice cream. That's right. And if you don't get it all over your face, then you're not really eating it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving mine for tomorrow. What, uh, what flavor? I don't know yet. I need to go check them out and ask about the secret flavors that they don't put on the menu. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ooh. You gotta know people, you guys. That's right. I think I'm not in the know. I need to get in the know. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin Rose is a working dairy farm, so there's plenty of ice cream to go around. Off of the glove of Orazio. Reagan Porsche keeps running. She'll hold up at third. Ravoslo is going to track down this ball and move towards the right field line and she doesn't get quite underneath and she reaches for it. I'm not, but she doesn't run instantly for it. It's like she gave up on it, maybe thinking that it was a foul ball. So her center fielder came all the way over from center field Polini to go and, and get that ball and throw it in. Dante Di Loro out to the circle for Italy. Siamo all'inizio della partita. Allora, proviamo a giocare. Inter base e seconda base sulla linea delle basi, ok? Terza e prima, abbastanza corti. Vediamo che cosa fanno loro. Potrebbero fare un ban, potrebbero fare un gioco corto. Lo facciamo là al sicuro, siamo al secondo inning, eh? siamo su di uno, ok? Yeah. Ok? Dai, mi raccomando facciamo là al sicuro, un out alla volta, eh? non cambia niente ragazzi. Forse. Se, se siamo sicuri di fare l'auto a casa lo facciamo, se no facciamo l'auto in prima, ok? Dai. 1, 2, 3! Dante Di La Ro, the manager of Italy, his daughter Chiara pitching in the circle. Runner on third. Both innings, Louisiana has gotten a runner on. Brings us to Damari Harris. Corner squeezing in for Italy defense. Trying to make sure if Harris puts the bunt down, they're in a position to make a play at home. Defense squeezed in. Italian team plays very fundamental textbook softball when it comes to strategy. They bunt and bunt situations, they run aggressively. The defense is pulled in with that runner on third. Sometimes we see the defense stay back. They're looking more for outs. Not Italy. They're going to be aggressive. If you try to take something, they're going to try and 
go after you and keep you from scoring. Even count for Damari Harris. walk of the night for De La Rose. She didn't walk anybody against Hawaii in the quarterfinals. Just her third at the tournament. Now batting for Team Southwest, number 41, Ava Musco. Situation just got a little better for Louisiana. Anna. Now runners on the corners with no outs and Ava Lusco at the plate. Harris is going. Garavello won't attempt the throw. Nobody was over there to throw to. It's a good eye now by Damari Harris, who took that walk, and then Ava Lesko to take that drop ball that was a little bit out of the zone. And earlier in this tournament, Coach Windell talked about their at-bats and how they weren't really looking for their pitches. They were swinging at the pitcher's pitches. Let's go off the end of the bat to De La Rowe. They throw home. She was safe. Regan Porsche slides in in time. Tie ball game. I think that De La Rowe did, maybe didn't realize that the runner was coming home. Regan Porsche is going to take off and come home. But you can see she doesn't immediately come up. She look, comes up looking for her while she's already coming down. You can see the tag is applied. bat slightly in the way but she gets in before the tag comes down amazing job of her getting her right hand, hand in, in between the catcher's legs to be able to make contact with the plate had she not done that she would have completely missed the plate and been out Dante De La Rowe talking to the home plate umpire Anthony McGee We got another tie ball game. We saw this in our first semifinal. Went to extra innings. Love the way that Reagan Porsche took her lead over at third base. So important as a runner at third base, not to open yourself up towards the field, but to keep your hips pointed towards first base. The minute that that ball was on, excuse me, towards home plate, the minute that ball was on the ground, she was able to immediately react and then head towards home. A bang bang play that just is a game of inches. That lead made all the difference for her. And Dante De La Rowe, the manager of Italy, was asking if she left early, but we saw that right there. She did, she did not. not. Oh, and that's why throws as well. That throw a little bit high coming home. Special pinch runner for Team Southwest. Louisiana is going to use a special pinch runner. And it'll be Ava Palumbo on third now base for, for Damari Harris. Number 16, Katie Delant. Still no outs in the inning. Louisiana's put a run up on the board. First and third situation. And Lusco going. Two in scoring position again. You know what you're doing, right? It's a good pullback by Delad. Looks like their Louisiana is playing ball angle. So in other words, as soon as they see the ball down, they're charging home from third base. Let's 
two balls and a strike on Katie DeLatte. And, and De La Rowe has that heavy drop ball movement. It starts right at the knees and then it falls off. Oftentimes it's a ball. It'll be up to these Louisiana hitters to not chase. DeLatte lays it down. Here comes the squeeze, the tag. Oh, it was... She was out of the box. She was out of the box when she made contact. So the runners will go back and DeLatt will be out. You see the ball go down and it's gonna hit off of the bat and hit off of her. So it's a double hit outside of the box. So it goes down and it hits the bat twice. I think it would have been an out at home anyway, so it's now batting for Team Southwest, number 22, Olivia Bourgeois. That's just the first out, though, in this inning. Correct. Olivia Bourgeois up with two in scoring position. down movement I'm telling you guys <laughs> it runs away from those righties it runs and falls it's a two-dimensional pitch and that's usually don't always see that at this level bourgeois sends a shot to right a run across they will hold up Lesko at third first hit for Bourgeois, first RBI of the World Series. That'll put a smile on your face. Now batting for Team Southwest, number 18, Amy Peterson. Let's talk about timely hitting and how important it is to win championships. Bourgeois goes out and gets a pitch on the outside corner. He's just going to lay it out onto the green. Perfect timely hitting. Easily is going to score a run. And they advance up another 60 feet. And the ball gets away from Garofello. Way away. Another run scores. Scored on the wild pitch. Top of the order to Haley Peterson. She's got Bourgeois at third. All three of Louisiana's runs have come here in the bottom of the second after Italy struck in the top of this inning. Ball four to Peterson. Two walks in this inning and another good at bats that Louisiana has put together against De La Rowe to have that patience and the discipline to not swing it as many pitchers pitches within these ABs. De La Rowe only had two walks coming into this game. She's got two in this inning. I'm continuing to apply the pressure and remember this inning started with that error out in right field. times do you think that we've seen a player tie their shoes today in the semifinals? <laughs> I'm going with at least five. I'm going to need a double knot That's on right. those. Lace them up. And the ball rolling out to center field. Another run is going to score. Bourgeois is home. And Peterson's at third. There's so many unfortunate defensive errors here for Italy in this inning. Aravello gets the ball and just doesn't make a good throw to her pitcher, DeLauro. 
Ends up going out to center field. Another Louisiana run comes across. So within this inning, we've had those two errors, a wild pitch, two walks. And Dante De La Rue back out to the circle. Looking for training videos for coaches and umpires? Get free backyard tips, practice plans, drills, videos, and more. Visit LittleLeagueUniversity.org today. Speranza. Giochiamo per l'out sicuro adesso, eh? Ok? Giochiamo per l'out sicuro. Poi dopo vediamo che cosa succede. La stiamo toccando l'altro lanciatore. Quindi c'è speranza. Ieri abbiamo fatto 4 punti contro le hawaiane. Non ne possiamo fare 6 contro queste? Eh? Dai. Però dobbiamo uscirne a testa alta. Basta, 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 basta errori. Ok? Basta, abbiamo finito il bonus. Ok? Forza. 1, 2, 3. Italy just needs to calm down here. They're making some little mistakes that are hurting them on the scoreboard. Well, and I wonder too if they're going to go over and talk to coach about it possibly it was the second visit of an inning and I think you have to potentially pull make a pitching change yeah that is correct yeah second visit in the same inning you have to remove the pitcher We're going to take a break real quick. Italy has to make a pitching change because it was the second visit to the circle in this inning. So because Italy had two visits to the circle in the same inning, they have to remove Chiara Delaro from the circle, and she cannot come back to pitch. So they pulled their shortstop, Caterina Benetti, over to pitch. They've switched spots. Uh, Katerina Benetti, though, is a player who can do it all. She just came over from shortstop. She's been phenomenal offensively in this tournament. Such an athlete throughout all these games. Another shoe? Look, tie them up, guys. Tie them up. Look, I'm double telling knot. you. Yes, double knot. yes, there, that's there it. Goes. Going for the double knot. It's hard to tie with the batting gloves on. And we don't even know about the ones that are inside the dugouts because we can't see in there. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bailey Nelson at the plate. Ooh. That's why they call it the hot corner. That's right. Ball and two strikes now. Benetti gets a strikeout against the first batter she faces. Now batting for Team Southwest, number 32, Kayla Giardina. Here comes the pitcher, Kayla Giardina. First pitch, and it's out to left. Peterson comes home. Nothing, excuse me, 5-1, Louisiana. Kayla Giardina just finds a hole on the left side of the field, a little bit out in front of it. 
but perfectly placed through the shortstop in the third baseman for another run on the board for Louisiana. Here's the shortstop, Ava Burkett. All five of Louisiana's runs have come here in the bottom of the second inning. Well, it's unfortunate, a couple of miscues, a couple of walks, two base hits for Louisiana, but that's why it's so important to pull the team together when the wheels start to fall off the cart. And it's tough, it, it's tough at any age, but especially for the younger athletes. And you know, too, it would have been a great time because they already had that coach's visit for somebody on the field, a player, to call everybody together yeah. instead of having it had to have been Coach DeLaRoe. And we didn't see that out of this team, but it would have been a great opportunity for them to do that. Well, it's easy to make mistakes like that when innings get very long and spread out. You yeah. forget that early on in the inning, he came out after that first error that was down the right field line. The runner got to third. He was trying to calm him down. And, you know, after things start to tra continue to transpire, you forget. That's why it's so important for all the coaches, all the players to know the rules, remind everybody. Yeah, because it almost felt like it happened in a different inning. Different inning. It did, yeah. That's, it definitely felt like it. There's a walk. Burkett is on first, and Giardina moves over to second. Louisiana has now batted around. Reagan Porsche led off this inning, was able to reach third on an error by the right fielder. Number two, let's not forget, for Louisiana, this is their game that they probably marked on their calendar. First, we got to make it through state. Then we got to make it through regionals. But once we get to the World Series, this is a game that we're looking at that could be the turning point of our season because this is a game that they lost last season. They fully expected to be in the championship game last year in 2018. They were undefeated here in the semifinal game. And so you know they want to make it to that championship game. They want to know what it feels like to play for a World Series championship. Talking with some of the girls this morning, they said, you know, we learned that you can't just come in here Nothing and assume. Nothing your hand, something you can drive. Assume that you have it. You've got to come in and play your yeah. best softball against these teams. And I think what we've seen them do, and let's not lose sight of it, is that their at-bats have been really good. They've taken a lot of balls. They made De La Rowe, who's a very good pitcher, work. And I think once that started to happen, then I think the rest of the defense started to feel a little bit more pressure, pressure. like, oh, this isn't the same feel as last night's game. Yeah, and last night Hawaii was very aggressive, swung at pitches outside of the zone, kind of played into De La Rowe's uh, pitching style. Yeah. And so when you're a little more disciplined, you make the pitcher bring the pitch into the zone. It creates havoc, not just for the pitcher, but for the defense. Full count coming to Reagan Porsche. Goes foul. And <laughs> the game's not over. I, I mean, no. it's just the second inning, yeah. believe it or not. It's just the second inning. They have so many more opportunities to score. And I mean, let's be honest, the score could be a lot worse than what it is right now. They're just down by four runs. Great shot from Reagan Porsche, and it gets away from DeBellis in left. Another run across. Giardina safe at third, Porsche safe at second. A double for Reagan Porsche. Pitch on the outside corner and Porsche just gets around it and slams it into left field. Dibelis out in left field, it gets past her just a little bit, but that is some great hitting by Porsche to put another run up on the board.
so they actually go back and rule it a single. Advanced to second on the error. Damari Harris got a big piece of it high in the sky. Polini underneath it. A big bottom of the second inning for Louisiana. They played six runs. Welcome back to Portland. I'm joined with the North Carolina team who's been sitting here being cheering for Team Italy. We've shown you guys have become close friends. How did you guys get to be such good friends with Team Italy, Lex? Well, we've just watched them play and they're so nice and kind to every team that's here. So we came close hands after we did the party for them and we just kind of cheered for them ever since and they cheered for us. So We have to skip Cassie because she has no voice anymore, but why, why did you guys throw a party for them? Well, we just kind of um, wanted to congratulate them because they don't have a lot of fans because they're from so far, but they're a really good team to everyone and we love them a lot. So we've learned that you learned how to say congratulations in Italian. So on three, I want you guys to say it. Ready? One, two, three. Congratulations, Oni! <laughs> nice job, girls. Thank you. There's been so many opportunities for these players to interact, and they get to interact with all the different teams. That there's player barbecues, there's a team room back at the hotel. Every All of these teams are staying in the same hotel, so you get to meet new friends from all over the world. And the team room seems super exclusive. It, it yeah. seems like a club that I want to be a part of. Yeah, but um, you but can't. We can't. Players only. Yeah. Amanda's players upset only. because the coach said, one of the coaches told us, players only. There's braid bars and who else? I mean, who knows what else yes. is in there? Like, just we don't all know. sorts it's of players games. only. <sighs> I know. All sorts of good stuff. <laughs> always want what you can't have, you know? <laughs> Cecilio Ravazio to Peterson. Little bobble, no problem. We'll have our first NFL preseason game with John Gruden and the Raiders taking on Cliff Kingsbury's Cardinals. It's Thursday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN Deportes in the ESPN app. Joe Tessitore and Booger McFarlane are on the call. They've got Lisa Salters on the field. Coverage is going to begin at 7 with a special edition of Monday Night Countdown. Top of the order for Italy with Carlotta Villa. How about the, the way that she can speak English? She's yeah. fluent in English. Yeah, her mother is from Chicago, so she grew up learning Italian and English. She actually translated for us for her teammates today, so we were appreciative of that. With her mom being from Chicago, she is a Cubs fan. Told us Javier Baez is her favorite player. Well, we've, we've got uh, from the Italian team, we've got some Red Sox fans, some Cubs fans. I think there was a Yankee fan in there as well. Much yeah. to the demise of the uh, Red Sox fans. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like this is a, a little bit of an off-speed pitch out of the hand of Giardina. Uh, Carlotta Villa just second guessing herself and on her front foot. We're going to have a pinch hitter for Italy, Alessandra Biffy. We do have minimum mandatory play, so everyone is going to get to come up and have an at bat. So around the third inning, around this time, is when you start to see all the substitutions. Biffy is the tallest on the team, listed at 5'7". Coach told us she was a really good listener. Stai girando troppo aperta. Stai più compatta. Peterson getting two of the outs in this inning. Moving on to the bottom of the third. Baseball. And that's it. it allows you to lose yourself in a dream. To feel and remember a season of life when summer lasted forever. Have fun playing baseball. It's never going to be any better than this. 
Little League Baseball World Series gets underway from Williamsport Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can catch all the games on our ESPN family of networks. Oh, I'll take some of that. <laughs> Thank you. So cute. So cute. <laughs> Now, these are the best days of your life with that girl right. experiencing that's right. right there. I like the two barrette <laughs> choice in the hair. That's, oh, yeah. that's a strong choice. Now, it was a big three. bottom of the second three. inning for Louisiana. They scored six runs on three hits, three walks, three errors, and a wild pitch. And now Claire Murphy is going to pinch hit and lead off. She actually picked up her first hit of the tournament against this Italy team on Sunday in pool play. Yeah, I, I think this is just such a good reminder of just what this sport can teach you. This sport can take you to the highest of all highs and then throw you just hours later into the lowest of all lows. But it's just it's one of the lessons that you learn about this sport of how to work through that, how to still stay focused, how to still take it pitch by pitch. and. And every single player, Michelle, I think, has gone through an experience like what Italy is facing right yeah. now. The game's not over. That's, that's not what I'm saying, but still felt like we had the biggest win ever. And you turn right back around and you don't quite play your best game. Well, it's the mentality of it all. This game has a way of teaching you lessons. Yeah. And <laughs> Constantly. Constantly, <laughs> absolutely. And that's why you, you literally need to play it at all levels. Little League all the way up to the Olympics, one pitch at a time like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Because if you don't and things start to compound, that's when the wheels really fall off. There's the second strikeout for Katarina Benetti. We saw her enter the circle for Italy when they had a second visit to the circle in the same inning. I don't think the manager for Italy realized that, and that means no. they had to make a pitching change. We're going to have another pinch hitter for Louisiana. It'll be Maddie Branch. And I think you learn too just the importance of controlling your emotions and what you're feeling and knowing that you have to not just be there for yourself but be there for your teammates because and I feel like it's the biggest at this level right here 11, yeah. 12, 13 years old that you learn what you're showing on the outside affects everybody around you and everybody's going to have those hard times and go through them. Maddie Branch likes the first pitch. Great job for Benetti to stay calm and get the out. Well, what's amazing for Benetti is that she came in last Good inning and she she hadn't warmed up. I mean, she was playing shortstop, so she comes in in a tough situation. Now she's got a little bit of a, a couple of pitches underneath her legs and warmed a, up a little bit. She retires the first batter of the inning via the strikeout. She just gets a ground ball, makes the second out of the inning. Oh. Somebody's making an ice cream stop. <laughs> All <laughs> kinds of goodies right there. I like the two scoop. What is the blue flavor? <laughs> Bubblegum, maybe? Is that bubble gum? I think that's I bubble it was pink. Gum. No? This Anything is Ava Palumbo pinch hitting in the nine spot. Oh, yeah. Cotton Candy. Ryan, our stats Ryan, man. you go. He Profes Ryan professional over here. Nerd. Did you Cotton have some candy? earlier? Ryan had some earlier. I, I just called him out. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Boletto makes the toss. Three up, three down. Ice cream time at Alpenrose. North Carolina has already made its way to our championship game. You can see that tomorrow night at 10 Eastern on ESPN. That first game, I feel like I didn't breathe for the final three innings. It was so close. <laughs> Went to extra uh -huh. innings. And then finally in the eighth inning, North Carolina defeated Oregon 3-2. And now North Carolina has come back into the stands to help cheer on this Italy team who's down 6-1 in their semifinal. Chiara De La Rowe will lead off Chiara the fourth De inning. Still time for this Italy team to rally and come back. First pitch strike from Kayla Giardina. And it was awesome when we talked to Kiara earlier today. We were asking her and Katerina Benetti, you know, what's your favorite part about the U.S.? And, you know, Kiara said she likes everything, but 
it's the fact that softball is, is more famous here. Everybody recognizes that if they're in a restaurant and you know somebody asks, hey, you know, what are you guys doing here? It's we play softball, and everybody understands that. They get it. They know it. Softball is popular, but it, in their country, she said it doesn't matter so much. Right. It's obviously soccer oriented and some mm -hmm. of the other sports. So when they say softball, that they play softball, a lot of the the folks back home in Italy don't quite know or understand the sport. I'm sure they have to say it's more like baseball. Yeah. Validate a little bit. Well, but hopefully the Olympics might help. I was help just going to say, because, but go Italy, ahead. Italy, <laughs> thank you, I'm stealing your thunder, Courtney. Uh -huh. Italy qualified for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics a couple weeks ago. That's right. One of three teams that have qualified, along with the U.S. and Japan. There are three spots remaining in the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. And so we'll know by the end of September who those teams are that are going to the Olympics. Yeah, and Erica Piancastelli is playing for the Italian team, who's a fan favorite for this Italy team as well. And she played at McNeese. And then also Emily Carasoni, who played at Auburn, yep. is on that team as well. Giardina, strikeout number three. Courtney Damari Harris has an interesting story. Three years ago, she had scoliosis surgery. Her spine was curved like an S, so she has two titanium rods and her entire spine is fused. And when you think about it, it's like taking a string and straightening it. So she's 5'11 now. After the surgery, she went from 5'7 to 5'9. And they can't correct this, the the curvature the entire way so she could actually be even taller than she is now it's a tough surgery she said she had to skip sports for six months she couldn't do pe for eight months but now after the future now she says nothing Africa, really bothers her three, she gets kind of tight in the hips uh, because your back doesn't stretch anymore but she says other than that there's been no uh, lingering effects from it wow that's just incredible at 511 right now just think she'd be Probably over six foot. Yeah, at 13 years old. Yep. Her father is a six eight, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if she's got room. She might still keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's a pitcher too. Yeah. Really long levers yes. that she mm -hmm. has. Plays a mean first base. Good stretch. She also wears a size 10 shoe. Ooh. Wow. At 13. That's about at 13 like years old. <laughs> She's known to be the team jokester as well, by the way. Keeps everybody loose. And Orini strikes out number four for Kayla Giardina, Louisiana up 6-1. Little League would like to extend a special thank you to its official sponsors like New Era Cap, who helped maintain the strength and leadership of the Little League program. Little League would also like to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special experience for millions of children. All the umpires are volunteers. They donate their time to come here to Portland and officiate every game of this Little League Softball World Series. It's pretty amazing. I think uh, Little League keeps count. I think they say it's usually about a million volunteers a year. They're out wow. the world <laughs> supporting all their leagues. It's a lot. It's a lot of folks a lot. making sure that there's there's opportunities for the kids to play ball. Now batting for Team Southwest, number 18. And Adrian they have Peterson. an umpire at every base mm -hmm. and down two the down the line. That's right. So you can get that in the college level. And replay. Yeah. And replay. And replay. <laughs> we are covered. Literally, all bases are covered. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and lines. And yeah. lines. <laughs> Third time we've seen the top of the order and Haley Peterson at the plate for Louisiana. Their big inning was the second where they scored all six of their runs. I think if you're Louisiana, you want to still continue these at bats. With the way that they've hit this World Series coming this game, they hit 243 as a team. I think you want to still continue to build on those APs. You don't want to just settle with your five run lead. Peterson. And the toss is made by Del Coro Barletto. 
so important to just continue to try to have those great at bats and extend this lead. Now batting for Team Southwest, number five, Bailey. Delco Paletto is going to scoop that ball up. Nice throw across the infield. And Villa at first base. Good job of getting up and getting that ball. Italy trying to settle back in. But getting up and getting that ball. Italy trying to settle back in. One away for Bailey Nelson. <laughs> this Louisiana team has a chance to really spend some quality time together during their state tournament was when Hurricane Barry hit and they were stuck in a hotel for two days. So there wasn't a ton to do. They went to movies a lot. Coach Ray actually had them out in the rain when it wasn't lightning and storming, just raining, working with wet balls to get ready for any conditions they would face right. during the rest of the season. But that was good bonding time. Good little challenge. Villa covers the bunt well. Yeah, Carlotta Villa, the lefty first baseman, is able to charge this bunt, gets her feet turned and already set at the angle to make that throw to first base. So very good footwork by the first baseman. Makes it somewhat easier for her second baseman, Finici, to be able to see that ball out of her hand. Well, I love that Finici was on time to the bag, too, because a lot of times, it, you know, second base is a tough position when you're young because there's so much going on. <laughs> You know, which bag am I covering? You know, where am I going? And she was there on time and able to make that out. This is Kayla Giardina. RBI single in that second inning, that big second inning for Louisiana. Valetto ran on it but couldn't quite grab it. Giardina reaches. Error at third. Now batting for Team Southwest, number 29. Yeah, tough bounce for Delco Valetto. Body moving faster than <laughs> what that ball was. Yeah. Sets up a runner on for Ava Burkett. Katarina Benetti has been really composed. She was kind of thrown into the circle pretty quickly in the second inning. Just doing her thing, but talking to her and watching her play, you kind of get that's just her personality. Yeah. Just loves to be on the field. Just like any uh, 10, 11, 12 year old that enjoys the sport, right? They all talk about their passion and how much they love the game. And she said her dad is a part of the Europe Africa staff and watches the games from back home. Wasn't able to come here and make the trip, but. Knows it, and he was happy about that win last night, of course, staying up and watching it. Burkett, deep, hits the wall and bounces. The outfield was pulled in. Run coming home. I told you the next one's going out there. You know, this is something that I think Coach Windell in Louisiana have been waiting to see out of this Louisiana team is to go with the outside pitch. 
to stay on that side of the plate and keep your front shoulder and front side on it and be able to let that ball travel to send it the other way. Oftentimes we've seen this Louisiana team get pitched outside but hit it off the end of their bat, ground balls towards the left side of the field, but excellent piece of hitting by Ava Burkett to almost hit this one out of here, or hit that one out of here. That's her fourth double in this World Series, the second most. And Reagan Porsche is connecting again. Another run across. Porsche still going. Safe at second. Well, Reagan Porsche has been on fire. And really, to second your point, Amanda, this is a Louisiana team that now has 39 strikeouts in this tournament. And Coach Ray was talking about that we need to do better at laying off pitches up in the zone and going and getting a pitch like that down at the knees. Just what Porsche does, drives that right down the line. And, and I think if this team can get into rhythm and really start to collectively get those hits back to back, they're going to be tough if they come through this game and the championship game tomorrow. They came into this game hitting just 243, way more potential than what that batting average has shown. And they'd go up against a pitcher if they do indeed win that no hit them earlier in the tournament. The yep. first game they went up against Campbell Shane for North Carolina and she no hit them. So you know they want a little bit of revenge yep. too if they hold on to this lead. Damari Harris is going to left too. Porsche gets the green light to come home. RBI single for Harris. Back to back to back now, well struck balls off the bat of Louisiana and all smiles for Damari Harris because she hit this ball so hard. Quick hands, gets her hips that through and turns on that ball towards the left Ava side. Lusco. All started with that error and then pass the bat to Burkett, Porsche and then Harris getting in on the action. Ava Lusco drops it too. And Damari Harris will stop at third. The winning run right now is on first base. The run rule would be in effect. It's up by 10 after four innings. Looks like Louisiana is going to bring back in Katie Delat Delat to bat here. With runners on the corners, the winning run at first. Hey, there's two outs. They're going to try and get you out. Special pinch runner for Louisiana, Claire Murphy, will be at first base representing that winning run. Now batting for Team Southwest. Number 16, Katie Dolan. Runners going. And they tag her. A nine to one lead for Louisiana as we go to the fifth. Little League Softball is brought to you by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. <laughs> Some of the best outtakes from our lineups shoot this afternoon with the teams. One of the best parts of our broadcast is getting to see them introduce themselves. Sometimes it takes a couple of takes to get it just right. Louisiana is on top of Italy 9-1 to one as we start the top of the fifth inning. Winner of this one is moving on to the championship game at the Little League Softball World Series. Courtney Lyle, Amanda Scarborough, Michelle Smith with you. North Carolina has already made their way to that championship game. Now batting for your back again, number 14. Matilde. Italy's got some work to do here. Two innings to do it. Matilda De Colbaleto will start off the rally. This Italy team is out of Milano, Italy, northern Italy, of course. They traveled over to the Netherlands to play their region. 
and get the chance to represent Europe Africa. Went undefeated in that region tournament and beat the Czech Republic, a team that we've seen here at the Little League Softball yeah. World Series before. They beat them 14 to one in the final. Well, you talked about this opportunity to come here and play these teams from America because they don't get the opportunity to play this type of competition throughout the year, all year long, wherever they live at. So great opportunity when they can come over here and, and play better competition and makes them better. Well, you can see their improvement, you know, throughout this tournament from the beginning of the tournament. Winning that quarterfinal last night against Hawaii. Couple of moments in the games where they struggle a little bit, but that you know what that's youth softball. I think back over my career I can I had a lot of implosion moments. <laughs> <laughs> hey, three strikeouts in a row right now for Kayla Giardina for Louisiana. Now batting for Europe Africa, number one, Sveva. Sveva Mariotti will pinch hit. Her favorite TV show is Bones, too. We had another player. It was for North Carolina. Yeah, right? It was um, Vanderpool, I think. Yeah. No. It's all running together. And we talked to all four of the teams <laughs> today. So it got a little, it's getting a little hazy. That's like the, <laughs> the emoji with the mind blowing. Yes. <laughs> uh. We text that back and forth to each other a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While looking for training videos for coaches and umpires, get free backyard tips, practice plans, drills, videos, and more. Visit littleleagueuniversity.org today. I think it was Addison Gates, guys. Adeline Gates. Adeline yep. Gates. Yep. Yes. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another leadoff hitter. Think of the yes. wrong leadoff hitter who's fast. They're both blonde, too. <laughs> Good job, Corey. Is she the one that wanted to be the uh, forensic pathologist? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And solve crimes. Yep. Not yes. like, yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Very cool. Here's Emma Silva. love the fact, too, you guys, that you get to come to the World Series and you get to play a lot of games. Yeah. You're not just coming all the way over here and you know playing two games and then you're out of the tournament and, and you get sent home i mean you come here and you play at least what five or six games yeah and win or lose tonight you have another game tomorrow there's still consolation games mm -hmm. so yeah there was a consolation game before our two semifinals today there will be two consolation games before the championship tomorrow because that's what it's all about is getting the experience uh, and a absolutely. chance at the end of the day to get better yes you want to win the tournament but then the day you, you just want to grow you want to get better yeah, it's all about practice and reps and opportunities. Emma Silva is one of those players that loves to train. She goes to the ballpark every day, whether it's for practice or just training with her dad. I always love hearing that, that kids want to have to drag their parents. Hey, I want to go get some more work in. I want to go hit. I want to work on my pitching some extra outside of practice. Yeah, we heard that a lot this week, talking to the coaches. I think the most in the three years that I've been here, yeah. coaches going out of their way to mention, and this player comes before practice. This player stays after practice. This player won't ever leave the field. And they're working hard. Field rats. Field rats. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Gotta have them. Strikeout for Kayla Giardina. She gets two strikeouts in this inning. Bottom of the fifth inning in our second semifinal today. Louisiana leaving, leading Italy 9-1. And we're going to start off with a 
pinch hitter, Libby Duthu. Italy was actually the first team to score in this game. It was back in the second inning. They got on the board first, thanks to an error. But then it was a monster bottom of the second inning for Louisiana, where they scored six runs. Two balls and a strike to Duthu. Go Corbelletto. Gives him out number one. Yeah, Deb Corbelletto has a great arm too. Every time she picks up the ball, she has a cannon who throws to first base. Olivia Bourgeois got an RBI single in that second inning. If you're Louisiana, you like these at-bats that they've been having in this game. It doesn't seem like they're chasing things. They're waiting on their pitches, and that's been a problem for this yeah. team earlier in the World Series. Well, that's what Coach Ray talked about. He said, you know what, we have just been struggling and... I like to call him Coach Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Just the first name. Like the kids. Um, but he, uh, yeah, he talked about it. He's like, I'm not sure why we're doing it, but we're doing it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I've been trying to tell him to lay off the rise ball. You know, he kind of says it with his little southern accent. And, 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 you know, sometimes it's unfortunately contagious at times. But then so is hitting when hitters start to become a little more disciplined. And we've seen that in the game here this afternoon. Can I just say that your Louisiana accent sounds a little bit more Texan or like southeastern <laughs> flair? It's just somewhere in the Gulf down there. <laughs> Mixing somewhere it up. touching the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> I did see a crawdad hat in the stands. Yep, yep. One of the fans has a big crawfish hat. He borrowed Michelle's. Michelle was wearing that coming into the game yeah. and she said, yeah, you can borrow it. Yeah, there, no, that's no, it. That, that was my regular hair that was on my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, about lo it about looks like that. <laughs> well, we were asking them, too, where they're like, well, wh uh, did you guys bring up you know, the Cajuns are known yeah. for those great Peterson. ability to cook that gumbo and all the jambalaya and have really good pregame meals. And they said, no, no, we thought about packing it and sending it up here, but it was just, it was a lot. Yeah, we get fed really well when we go to LSU. Yes, tailgate during the regular Ooh. season. We show up instead of two hours before the game, we show up about three hours <laughs> early and <laughs> get a belly full. You Top. might go hungry there, sorry. No. They have some great food. I th one of the best things I've had in at LSU is a, it's a shrimp fried wrapped in bacon. Mm. It was great. Ladies, I love when we asked the players today what their favorite food was, and they said sushi, sushi, Alfredo pasta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to say. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were slightly perplexed. And then, and then we did ask them. They were like, oh, you mean Cajun? We're like, we're supposed to say our Cajun stuff? It was, yeah. it was interesting how they... Oh, right, jambalaya. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> And they're like, to them, that's not special because it's probably what they eat and see all the time. For us, we're like, yes! <laughs> and sushi and the Alfredo are special for them. Yeah. So when they have it. Yep.
Peterson sends it skyward. And it's scooped by DeBellis. Going over to the sixth inning. Last chance for Italy. Our first semifinal of the day was so good, we went to extra innings. But it's National Left-Handers Day, and we saw some nice left-handed pitchers. Well, oh, look at that curveball working, but the hitters came through in the end, eighth inning, getting it done. And North Carolina was able to take the lead in the eighth inning to seal their spot in the championship game. It's going to be tomorrow at 10 Eastern, and you can catch it on ESPN. Yeah, and that was an important eighth inning for North Carolina when they were able to put two runs on the board in the international tiebreaker. Well, both those teams pulled their aces or their starting pitchers because if they would have thrown that seventh and eighth inning, they would have been burnt for today. So it was interesting to see this strategy come out by the coaches and North Carolina able to play two runs in that tiebreak. Eleonora Chisena. Flies it to Haley Peterson. One away. Italy with just two outs to work with. And a lot of room to make up. Number five, Carlota Vila. Top of the order here, though, with Carlota Vila. It's it back to Giardina. Two away. Yeah, I, I think that Italy should leave this game feeling really good about what they did here. With, you know, with their heads held high, they made an impact in this Little League World Series. They made some noise, they turned some heads. Took down a team who was undefeated and averaging over eight runs a game. Yeah, those are all learning experiences, setups for bigger things. I don't always like to call them setbacks or, you know, it's obviously not failure. They're all champions for being here, but it's, it's, a, it's a setup for something bigger and better in your career. For Louisiana, though, this is redemption from last year. They made it to this round at the Little League World Series, but that was as far as their road went in 2018. Looking to change that here. Tomorrow will be a big day here at Alpen Rose, River Ridge, Louisiana, going to the championship game where they will meet North Carolina. It will be tomorrow night at 10 Eastern on ESPN. One game for all the marbles here at Alpen Rose.